So hopefully you've watched the part of the lecture series where I talk about biodiversity and it's important. Then you understand that within a population of a certain species, there's going to be a, a great degree of variety in the organisms. This means that there's a chance that organisms can est establish different niches from the ones they actually live in. Remember from the first community college lecture where we talk about the idea of niche. And there's a fundamental and a realized niche. The fundamental niche is the, it represents the animal's potential or what it could possibly live. And the realized niche is what it actually, where it actually lives because of other things. But if the animal has a tolerance that's higher than what it actually lives, this means that it can disperse, it can spread, it can go somewhere else. And this is a product of the diversity that exists in, within the population. So it's kind of like the, the flow chart that you see in the bottom there. You know, you have to ask yourself, can the organs disperse? Well, this is going to de depend on a variety of factors. First of all, is there a limit to dispersion of the organism? If, if you say yes, it's probably because the organism can't go anywhere else. The area is either not accessible, he's trapped where he is, or he doesn't have the time or the energy or the effort in order to actually do that because it's too busy surviving where he actually is to actually try to worry about going somewhere else. You see what I'm saying? Then, but sometimes there is access in the animal can migrate, it can go somewhere else, or you know, there's no problem, there's no limit to dispersal. But sometimes behavior of the animal limits the distribution. The animal is not the kind of animal that it will pick up and go. It likes to stay where it is, it likes its habitat, its Tolerance is very low. It's adapted to a specific condition. In that case, it won't go anywhere. But if the animal is willing to explore different environments, and then it may still spread out to different areas. Then you have to ask, is there other biotic factors, such as other species, which can possibly limit the dispersal? If you say yes, this means it's probably predators, parasites, competition, disease, and other reasons why if they move from where they are, they probably wouldn't be successful. And that goes along with the whole idea of competitive exclusion principle and other relationships in community ecology. If you have to go somewhere else where you have to compete and deal with pressure from the environment that you weren't used to deal with before, it's probably going to be unlikely that you're going to spread through other ecosystems. But if that's not a factor, you might spread. But then you might ask, is there other abiotic factors which might limit the disposition? Maybe chemistry factors. Maybe in these ecosystems I don't have the right amount of uh, water, pH, salinity, uh, the nutrients that I need, the food that I need. All of these things will maybe not be available for me, and so maybe I won't go anywhere. But, and, but even if everything in that new ecosystem is ideal, or are you actually able to cope with the change, there might be still other reasons like the temperature, the light, the soil structure, uh, the fo forest fires may happen there, the moisture level. In other words, does your niche allow you to spread? Look at the kangaroo, for example. It tends to live in a certain area of Australia, right? The darker areas. But it does show up sometimes in other areas. This means that it has tolerance enough to live in these other areas. But the distribution to other areas is limited by the fact that the, the certain things make it prefer those areas. The same thing is true at the ecosystem level. How can a biome grow or shrink? Well, that depends on what conditions the biome needs to exist. So a rainforest needs a lot of moisture and a, lot, a high amount of sunlight, right? And a lot of water and all that stuff. So. If the ecosystem becomes a little drier all of a sudden, then, or if the amount of sunlight changes, that's going to affect the presence of the rainforest. So this rainforest won't be able to stay there anymore. Likewise, ecosystems are changing now in the world because of global warming. So the areas where uh, a biome used to be are going to be shifting because of that. So the grasslands of the world, which rely on a temperate weather with a decent amount of moisture that is kind of seasonal, Right? Otherwise, it would be a deciduous forest. The temperate grasslands will actually shift north as the war world warms up. So areas like the U.S., which are the breadbasket of the world because it's a temperate grassland, will actually become drier, more desert-like. And places like Canada will become the new breadbasket of the world as the, the, the belt shifts north because of the change. And that's kind of what the, they're trying to show you with the ecosystems in the eastern seaboard of the United States how the prediction is that the range of the ecosystems here is shifting north because of the warming that's being predicted over the next few centuries. This means that habitats and organisms both 
disperse based on the conditions that allow them to disperse or not. In other words, an organism's tolerance, which has everything to do with its niche and therefore with the amount of diversity that exists in a population, uh, is going to determine its actual or potential habitat. Uh, likewise, uh, at the population level, the ascendancy, which is also based on its diversity, is going to help determine whether or not that ecosystem is going to survive or move as changes happen in the ecosystem.